Hey, what is going on? You are watching today and listening to, because this show gets repackaged, my live podcast, Sex with Stevie. I'm your host, Steve V. Rodriguez, and I'm back after a week off um, from taking a week off for myself. But it's really good to be back here with you all on this Thursday, June 18th. I hope you have a cocktail. We have got a lot to cover in this next hour. I am so excited. I have special guest Master Joshua, who's been on Tag's podcast several times, calling in in a little bit. I also have my co-host Cody calling in. I can't wait for that. We're downloading so much too, um, and then there's so much hot topics going on. But first, I just want to say, as we are in this uh, Pride Month, Cheers to you all. I hope you have a cocktail with me to, you know, enjoy this. Um, so cheers to you on that. Um, by the way, I don't know that I ever mention it much, but um, I usually like a good white wine. A, because I don't get drunk <laughs> too quickly, and um, but I like a nice crisp white wine. So that's what I'm drinking there. Let me know what you're drinking. Uh, let me get to some, uh, uh, this is a major week on so many levels. Uh, with earlier in the week with the Supreme Court, we talked about it on Tech's podcast, saying that no longer can the workforce discriminate against the LGBTQ. You cannot fire somebody in the workforce. Um, there's still more work to be done, obviously, within that, so I wouldn't get to, but this was a monumental, feet on uh, in Pride Month um, for us LGBTQ. So I, I love that. And obviously today was another monumental moment for the Supreme Court uh, relating to DACA uh, and uh, the Dreamers. So that now that they uh, Trump tried to get rid of that, I'm not going to get too political today, but it was a major, major day for that, and um, but still more work to be done with that. Um, I would invite you to just look up a bunch of uh, the material because Trump could actually return, if he was re-elected, he could actually bring back the elimination of DACA, the program, which would mean all these dreamers that really only were born or only really knew the United States would have to go back to their countries that they don't even really, for the most part, probably even know. They're as American as you and I. So, um, which is why it's so important right now that we vote this November to get that person out of the White House. And I will stop right now on my political rant um, and get into the show today. This is a call-in show. This is my call-in show. It's live every Thursday night, and you can call in. I'm going to actually put it in the, um, although I have some special guests, I want to hear from you. The number to call in is 908-312-1015 is my call-in number. I am giving you solicited sex advice and so much more. <laughs> um, I do have a question for you in this next hour that I want to um, ask you guys. And I guess my question to you all, and you can, you can certainly call in or you can simply put it in the comment section and I'll read it throughout the hour. My question to you is, as the country moves into opening up into the various phases, and I know every state's a little bit different, I think Monday for us here in New York City is phase two, um, how far are you willing to go in terms of going out to some of these establishments that open up via, I know as in some of the phases, uh, it's going to be restaurants. Uh, in other phases, it's going to be the barber shop. So we can finally get our hair did. And I've actually been doing it on my own this whole quarantine. And I'm not mad at it. And I think it's been working for me. But um, at some point, I am going to want to actually go to a professional. Yeah. 
because they do exist and I respect them. So how far are you willing to go in the as we open up the country? Tell me, um, are you willing to meet up with friends? Are you willing to meet up with a sex hookup if you're into that like myself? I want to know. Um, as my other show, Tags Podcast, we were talking about the other day, you can... Um, New York City, the New York City Health Department has been recommending wearing masks and even going as far as suggesting, they didn't say it full on outright, but they did suggest glory holes, which I thought was pretty, wow, okay, I mean glory holes, and I couldn't help but think of all my my uh, friends that are really good with the tools and the, the wood, I have a few different friends that are really good with that and maybe I was thinking can you like make me a glory hole that I can kind of put in my apartment just a question I don't know anyway that's um, my question to you is how are you going to be approaching um, as we move forward with the different phases Amelia um, thank you um, and I missed you guys last week too um, but I did um, need a week off my mental uh for me personally i think i needed a week off we've been going strong since march and i was thinking yeah i think i need a week off and but i feel great taking that week off because i'm back stronger than ever and but it was necessary for me to just take that week off and you know that's all and but of course when you're someone like me and you take a week off like this I was thinking, what should I do in that hour that I would normally be doing this show? And of course, I was sitting on my couch watching, you know, not looking cute at all, wondering, like, what should I do in this hour? And of course, I was thinking, it's 10.15. Normally, I would be with my first guest. And I couldn't get out of my mindset, although I didn't look cute and I didn't have to set up all this thing. And there's a whole setup here, y'all. Just, I know you know. Um... Amelia, you can build me a glory hole? Cheers to that, Amelia. Uh, thank you. Uh, who knew? So I love my... I am obsessed with my friends that are good with their hands. And when... I mean, I'm not good with your hands, but... Because I'm good with my hands in those ways. But I mean, good, good with my... The guy, the, my friends that really know how to work with actual tools and power tools. Okay, I'm going back to that. Anyways... I'm really always impressed with it. Amelia, if you want to help me build, we can construct it together. Maybe throw a little glitter on for good measure. I'm all for it. Frank Pond, uh, get the handyman. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, Cody, meet. Oh, Cody, my co-host is going to be calling in a little bit. I'm reading your message here. You want a glory hole too? Cody, you and I have so much to talk to today. I don't even know where to start. Actually, I do, and we will. Okay, um, James. Hey, James. Hello. Good to see Well, you can see me. I can't see you, but um, hello there. And, um, oh, thank you, Frank. Outfit on point, those shorts. Yeah, I just... I decided to kind of dress from the top bottom, so I'm, for a lot of you that don't know, I'm an accessory, I was going to say whore, but that doesn't seem appropriate. Let's just ponder that a second. I love my accessories, that's all I'm going to say, and so I really kind of focused on this part, and from here it's jean shorts and nothing, and that's it below, so thank you Frank for noticing that. Um, before my first guest calls in though, there was a couple things that I wanted to talk to you all about. Um, first of all, Florida, get it together. That's all I got to say. You know, we were talking about it on Tech's podcast the other day with my co-host Jeremy Russ Lopez and Lincoln about how the as the country is opening up and every state is different. I was telling the story how I was riding one of the city bikes here down Ninth Avenue and as I was riding down I rode through a popular area here in New York City Hell's Kitchen where many of our gay bars are located and what I noticed as I was riding my bike as many of you probably noticed just going on to the various gay blogs is there were so many gays shirtless 
congregating, having a good cocktail, and I'm not. I'm going to be honest. There was a part of me that had a little bit of what's the word? Because I'm always late on that FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah, didn't matter that I didn't know any of those kids at all, but FOMO. However, I proceeded to just wonder, like, wow, are are these people practicing their social bubbles? Okay. That's something we talked about on text podcast the other day, thanks to my sister. Or are we getting a little too relaxed on some of this stuff? And for the first time, I was telling on text podcast on Tuesday, you can listen to it, episode 171. I had uh, a friend of mine, David and Phil, Phil, surely you, has been on this show. And I had them over to, I have like a cool rooftop here. And they came over, and that was the first time I've ever, since March, I think, gotten together with anybody. And it was a little bit, um, I don't know, I was excited. It was like a brand new me. It was exciting. We all practiced social distancing, but there was a party to be had on my rooftop up there. It was actually really fun and really cool. Um, yeah, and Amelia, yep, um, you're calling it out, Atlas Social Club. <laughs> yes, but there was other bars out there, too, that were doing it. Prop up the crotch. Okay, I can see what I can do. Um, before my first guest calls me, though, I have to share with you, let's take a drink here, because I only have a few minutes, and this thing is all very on schedule here. You don't realize it, but we're on schedule here. One of my all-time favorite artists that I think we should all be celebrating right now, y'all, is Sylvester. And in honor of celebrating our gay history, for those of you who didn't don't know Sylvester, Sylvester was one of the, the disco greats. Actually, an artist that was great. He was gender gender fluid when it wasn't cool to be gender fluid. He was himself. He, oh, there is an amazing musical that I was fortunate enough to see that Cheryl Lee Ralph produced, and it was traveling around the country for a while there. It was, it's really, really good. Um, but I wanted to share with you before my co-host uh, calls, there's a documentary that I, also, uh, I want you all to see, and let me just, in honor of Pride Month, Amazon Music has released Love Me Like You Should, the Brave and Bold Sylvester. It's a new mini documentary about the trailblazing disco, queen of disco. This short features interviews and famous faces like Martha Wash, y'all. Come on, Martha Wash and Billy Porter, and along with rare photos and video clips of the singer. I'm gonna post uh, the short film or the clip on tagspodcast.com tomorrow, but just know that it's on Amazon, and I couldn't think of a better time to pull out Sylvester. Uh, quick story, I used to work in radio, and a major market uh, black-owned radio station in Berkeley, California, The Quiet Storm, KBLX. And Leslie Stobel was one of the on-air, she's still a jazz on-air personality in the Bay Area, but she was good friends with Sylvester, and she used to tell me stories when I used to hang out in her booth, that he would come at late night after he had been DJing or working and come hang out with her in her booth as she did her like mix show, and I was just living for it. But anyway, Sylvester's the show and tell here, and just a little quick, they're gonna make a film of it, and who do you think could play Sylvester, who do they insinuate? Well, yeah, you're right. Here we go, here we go. Um, hello? Hello? Hi, Stephen. Hi, Master Joshua. Thank yes. you for having me on, I'm super excited. Yes, yes, give me a second here as I am producer, sound, audio technician oh, here. Yeah, and yeah. and I took some time out to create a little um, 
if, if, if your people are watching or when you watch this later, I created a little tag for your name. So as you're calling in, it'll say Master Joshua at Master Joshua NYC. Uh, how the heck are you doing? Uh, I've been doing good. It's been extremely uh, crazy with COVID and uh, just the change in life, everything that's been going on. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. It's been pretty interesting. Well, you've been on the show for so many times, and as many people know, you are a master of BDSM. And real quick, here's a question for you that just came into my mind. And this this show, um, by the way, Joshua, is a little bit different. It's a little off the cuff. How do you just one become a master in the BDSM world, or how do you decide that you're a master? So there's. There's different there's different uh, different opinions on on what master is and how one achieves it, and when you actually really boil it down, there is no real master, right? Um, there there is no origin of this, but the way I approach master is of the teacher student type. I was gonna say I was just gonna say like a leader. Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, it's about about learning to unlock yourself and uh, I really approach it in a, in a martial artist type of mind frame perspective when it comes to spirituality and, uh, and humbleness and integrity, you know, some serious solid foundations. Along with, oh I've go ahead, yeah. No, so I've invested time in learning the techniques and also investing time in myself, introspection and really building out my character. And, and talking the talk and walking the walk, so to speak, right? Because when we talk about BDSM, when we talk about the leather lifestyle, the idea is openness and open communication and trust and integrity and responsibility and accountability, right? And we can't speak these big words if we're not willing to be accountable ourselves. Well, one of the things you write on your website, and I was struck this time when I went to your website just be to do a little bit of research before a conversation here, is I love how when you go on now, you have to put your age on there, and uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I love because I think that's responsible, and, and we I do the same thing for this show, too. I put 18 and over, you know, I just think that's... You know, we, we, we have to be responsible in that respect because there's legalities and... And there's things that there's things that you have to really understand what consent and adult responsibility is. I mean, even at 18, 19 years old, you're just learning how to walk. I mean, you, you're still learning the ropes of what personal responsibility is and what accountability is. And uh, you know, it, we have to we have to make sure we're doing our due diligence for people who are looking to do this responsibly. Well, one of the things that I read when I first went onto the website that I really was struck by, and it makes so much sense, and I know because I know you, but you you just state immediately once you put your age in there, um, helping others find themselves through introspection and living lives in truth in order to grow towards one's maximum potential, maximum potential, and relating to. Um, the fetishes and the leather community, and we're going to talk. I want to ask you in a minute what you're currently doing and how you've transferred into the Zoom, which I was on earlier. But I thought of a question uh, um, for people that are exploring fetishes or wondering. You know, we've all had a lot of time in quarantine to probably reflect and. A lot of us has probably jacked off so much that we're like, is there more to, to this? And I was wondering, and I had a question as I was getting ready for today, and I wrote, is it more important to look at where our fetishes may stem from or to simply explore our fetishes and desires from your expert opinion? Like, do our fetishes stem from our past? Like, should we be exploring that in our upbringing? And can they shed light into a deeper meaning of growth? Or should we not really worry about that and just kind of go with the fetish? You know, it's, it's almost like uh, they're both yes and they're both no, right? Because sometimes our fetishes lie in trauma. And if we're looking to go in and explore 
these types of fetishes, we have to be ready to face the trauma that's associated with it. And if we're not, un if we don't understand that this is part of approaching BDSM responsibly, it can end badly, right? Because right. then we can start triggering emotions that we've not addressed, or uh, we we use BDSM to medicate for for those types of uh, uh, traumas, right? Where some people, where they use impact to feel to feel pain, so that they can feel something, right? When they're depressed and it, some people do it, and it's not, you know, that's not recommended. However, uh, sometimes we don't know where the fetish is come from, and we're curious, right? So, or we do have an idea, but, you know, no risk, no reward, right? If we're willing to take the uh, responsible steps and acknowledge there's something behind this, and we're going to find out during the progress, you know, that's that's okay, too. We all, we all approach fetishes and kinks and our journey uniquely. It sounds like, yes, there, it can be actually both ways, but if you are willing to go there to look at maybe where some of this came from, I mean, for example, I was, you have a live Zoom show right now on Thursdays right before our show here, and I was tuning in, and one of the, one of your listeners or person, uh, we'll talk about it in a minute, but was asking about a fetish that they had and you were giving good advice on that. Um, I think it could probably go both ways, right? Like you can look at where did this come from, but sometimes fetishes can be a big deal to us because we're embarrassed, we're worried about what our partners might think. Like what would they think if they knew I liked this? And yeah, all it, of that stuff gets in our head, right? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. It's it's because there's shame built behind a lot of it. You know, some of us have religious upbringings. Some of us have uh, regional or cultural upbringings that tell us that certain things are wrong or less than. You know, as a Latino, uh, machismo is a big thing in Latino yeah. culture, right? So to not be, you know, to, to, to be or walk a certain way you know, you look that different because you're not what you're supposed to be doing. So you, we carry shame with us and guilt for desires, and uh, it's hard to work through that. But finding a way to establish a safe space so that we can be comfortable in conversation, right? Because also, in the in the term safe space, safe space isn't me saying, "Hey, Stephen, I'm into foot." Uh, I'm into a foot fetish. Would you mind me playing with you? Right? That's not a safe space. That's me encroaching on you in a space that I've created. Right? A safe space would be, Stephen, I, I'm, I'm a foot fetishist and I've been curious about this and I've been exploring it and I give you my history, but I'm not asking anything from you. That's so, so interesting. That we can That's so interesting that you would say that because one of your listeners. Uh, alluded to that and I don't mean to put you on the spot with the thing that I was listening to but it was somebody that had a particular fetish that I was listening to earlier and they said well if they don't have the fetish that I want then I move on like and you asked a very specific question that I was like as I was getting ready to have that like, okay now Master Joshua you asked him <laughs> do you have you said I think you said um, it had to do with sexism like what was the question you asked? Objectification. Do you, yeah, do you feel like you're objectifying? Is that what you asked? And, and I thought, wow, that's really good because, and I think it alludes to what you've just been saying, that it's fine to explore these fetishes, but they're your fetishes and you can share them with your partner, but it doesn't mean when your partner maybe doesn't show an interest that it's like, okay, well then F you, you're done, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's tough because I know that formula of, of uh, kinkster where it's a numbers game, right? This person's going to ask every person at this party if they're into foot, into, uh, foot fetishes. And either they say yes or no. If they say yes, he'll continue talking. If they say no, he'll move on, right? And it's very demeaning, right? It, it removes the value of a person in front of you when all you're interested in is getting your rocks off and moving on, you know. While it's hot in theory, 
right? In in person to person value, it's really demeaning and and and, can, and definitely comes off the wrong way. So I wanted to when I phrased my questions to him, I wanted to see if he would if he would acknowledge that. And he's in a different mind frame. He's in a different headspace to where right now it's all about him. And you know, I I understand that. I think we're all there at some point in our lives, but. Uh, there's been a plenty of opportunities for learning and understanding that the real play, the real vulnerability comes with the connection. But when we meet people and we connect with them on a person-to-person -person level and we put people before kink, it, it, uh, it allows us to, to be seen and to feel heard and allows us to be willing to discuss the deeper, more embarrassing kinks that we're not used to sharing. You know, like fisting or water sports or or forced orgasms you know there's different types of things that some of us aren't comfortable discussing openly because we're worried about shame and I, if we okay. uh, sorry and if we establish these tighter bonds and these tighter connections those doors will open and they'll open quickly and it's beautiful to be seen and to be heard I'm, I'm listening to your every word here and I chimed in on the conversation that you were having with uh, fisting uh, I won't tell anybody about what I said and I'm in, ignore the noise outside but, uh, this is live and I'm in New York City here but all right we're back yeah no <laughs> happens right um, it's interesting that you you know for so it's interesting the listening that you're talking about because so many of your parties and what you've done for so long and I've attended a lot of your parties here in New York City and I know you travel around the world to so many BDSM events and it's about the doing and the the action verb like I'm just breaking it down to it some um, but during COVID and quarantining uh, we haven't been able to and I would love to hear your thoughts on how you've you've transferred to not doing, in other words, we're not going to your parties, you're not traveling, but I've noticed you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings and it's a lot of listening and sharing and Q&A and talk about what's going on right now with your work during this pandemic that we've been in. So it's been extremely slow. Everything almost hit a virtual stop. Uh, with COVID and, and uh, all of my work is person to person, right? As a pro dom, uh, majority of my meetings were in person. Right. Uh, hosting events. I hosted two events a month here in New York. Uh, and uh, everything came to a screeching halt in March. <clears throat> having, having community and education in the forefront of what we do, uh, I wanted to make sure that we, we maintained a connection with the community. And when Zoom came across my lap, it made me realize that we can take our discussions across the country and not necessarily, not solely uh, in New York where we were doing these in person. So allowing us to connect with kinksters from across ultimately the world uh, and hearing different people's experiences and stories, it really it really connects us globally uh, and 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 on a community level uh, with others where we get to hear validation and feel affirmed in, in a lot of our experiences because others are experiencing it. And we do that uh, once a week. It, it was really fascinating because I have attended your live events the back back in the day when we could go to all your events. And I know, <laughs> and I know you will. Um, and I know back to that master, I think so many of us are looking for leaders and I think I always think of you as a leader within our in our sexuality world for sure. Um, I hope you don't mind the title. Um, but no, or, no, I, I, thank you. I think that's what we can definitely always take away with from um, we look for our leaders and as it's kind of interesting that this time frame that yeah, of course we'd all love to go to one of your parties. You, you've done so many interesting parties around where you can, and your parties in particular are, you can just come and watch. You don't have to, you're very welcoming. It's not like, you know, what are you doing here? And you're on the sidelines, you can participate and you have your rules. But 
it's when you're in that mode, you don't have always a chance to, other than viewing, to really listen. And just listening to that one guy ask his question and share thoughts. And I, I mean, I could, I'm, I would imagine you're enjoying this period of having this Q and A. On the other hand, I was listening to another part where you and Kat, who I adore, your partner, um, that runs your studio, uh, they were asking you like questions almost from like a doctor perspective. And I would imagine like it's a little bit of both, right? Because you feel you need to be careful treading on what information you do give, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's always the legalese behind what uh, information I pass, right? Because a lot of people, I approach BDSM and energy exchange like that as a sort of therapy. Because right? while there's sexual energy there, there's also a lot of other energies. So that's certainly an approach that, that I have to it is is almost from a therapeutic standpoint. Uh, the the Q and A's allow us to to answer those questions, right? To connect with people on a social level outside of the distraction of a party, right? Where we can really get to hear each other speak, and it allows us to take a moment and to stop and to listen and to and to share, right? This this COVID time really gave. Uh, gave me a lot of time for introspection. Uh, I had my appendix taken out in surgery at, a month ago. Oh, wow. And yeah, it was very, very painful. But in that recovery time, uh, I was able to sit and sit quietly and spend a lot of time looking inward and really applying what I, what I learned introspectively about who I am as a person and what I'm looking to experience in life and share it with the people I've made those connections with. Uh, so I want to teach people how to communicate in this time because that's something we're not really good at, right? Understanding the feelings we are having and being able to put words to them. I think everything happens for a reason and I think sometimes we put so much emphasis on and, and trust in our teachers but we forget that our teachers are also humans and growing themselves and I'm so glad that you're doing well with this, but you've had that moment to kind of reflect on that. For people that uh, want to tune into kind of their fetishes and um, what's the process? What are you doing right now with your weekly Zoom meetings? So every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, I host a Q&A on Zoom with my partner. Uh, the information is posted on Instagram and Facebook and FetLife, uh, all under Master Joshua or Master Joshua NYC. If you have any other questions, you can message me directly and I'll be able to provide a link uh, to you. And that's an open format Q&A, so if you have any types of questions or you want to share stories, you can tune in. Uh, I'm also starting to live stream it on Instagram, which I really like, and I'll probably start live streaming it on Facebook, like I mentioned. And uh, we're there to provide a platform of no judgment and open ears to help answer any questions people may have, because it's a, it's a scary first step for a lot of people. It definitely is. And I was on there earlier, and I loved the format, and I was typing away in there. We were talking about, uh, somebody was talking about fisting, one of your listeners, and... I think I put my comments in there that I thought it was one of the safer yeah. things you could probably do. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, but I thought it was a really, I love the forum, and I thought it's kind of, this is a kind of a cool time for you to check in with, you, you know, people. And, and I would imagine that you're, you know, you're based in New York. I know you travel, but you're really connecting with uh, an international audience now that maybe, you know, you didn't have that, before excuse me <laughs> yeah you know i'm 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 thankful one for two reasons one you've helped you've helped me immensely and i'm always thankful and grateful for you because you you've helped me connect with others about this and right. this is a very important part for me so thank you also uh recon have featured me a, a couple times too which helped connect me especially in europe greatly in europe and and to hear stories and to share ideas and stuff has been has been fantastic for me. I've really enjoyed connecting with people internationally because hearing how things go in the Middle East 
and Germany, you know, it's it's very eye opening, and uh, I like to keep learning. Master Joshua, as always, I love it. You are such an inspiration to all of us, and you've always been an inspiration to me. Uh, I have it down here. You can follow him at Master Joshua NYC or go to Master Joshua. Is it MasterJoshua.com? Correct. And I'll list it on Tag's podcast tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and I'm so happy to see you and or hear you and see you. I have you on, on uh, Facebook as well. Oh, and, nice. Uh, I hope we can see each other soon. I would love that. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon, all right? Talk, talk soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. You were loud and clear. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking on with my co-host, Cody, Maurice, Yay. Doggett. How about That's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to doing a live show here where, you know, and, and you're, you're the lighting and your tech and, and anyways, no one needs to hear all that. But anyways, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm it's doing... so good to hear your voice, to see you on on the screen. I got you on the big screen today. Ashley's here with me. Oh my God. Do I look okay? <laughs> you look beautiful, darling, as always. I see what they were saying about, you know, pushing in the seat up a little bit. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. I needed a week off to just, you know, Sleeping Beauty here. and yeah. I am there with you. I was there with you. I was like, Whew, okay, all right, I get it. You want me to take the week off? I'm okay with it. <laughs> Cody, we have so much to talk about today. That, yes, we do. Um, one of the things that I didn't realize, are you a Sylvester fan? Oh, my God. So it was so funny that you said that earlier in, in, in the podcast because I was just thinking about how Sylvester is the like the perfect amalgamation of like disco which is the dance music of the time and like soulful music because he's done so yes. many soulful things like Martha Wash was one of his background singers Martha can we just um, say Martha um uh, <laughs> that should tell you something right there when Martha Wash is your background singer <laughs> that is that means your your tip top because he's done like you are my friend like Amazingly, uh, I just love Sylvester. I love Sylvester. And I was just listening today, actually, during my workout. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, well, good. I'm glad. And you heard my story on you can watch the short film, and they're going to produce hopefully the film, and hopefully um, it will get made. And I think it's going to be really cool. Um, before I get into our stuff, I, uh, um, one of our uh, viewers today, Mark, says it's unusual. Um, is it unusual to not have any kinks? And I'm wondering, Mark, if you mean you don't have any kinks. Um, all I would say to that is that kinks can come in very different ways. You can have a, what if, I think kissing can, like, can probably be a kink or, but I guess, I don't know. But Cody, do you have any kinks after, I don't know if you heard my conversation with Master Joshua. I did. We were listening, and we had a very in-depth conversation about kinks. And, and I think the the list of like socially acceptable kinks are is very short. Um, I have a couple kinks myself. <laughs> okay, okay, I hear you. I'm, I'm definitely into leather. I'm definitely into. <laughs> I've done I've done a lot of things. I I can't. I I mean I'm down to try anything at least once. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, one of the things as you, as we started the show from the beginning in March, I think it was, who can tell, yep. uh, we've been keeping up with you because you were somebody that I was, um, you had started dating somebody pre-pandemic and yeah. we've been following you like a fly on the wall as you've graciously given us insight into how it's been working and you've been keeping this relationship going with this guy throughout the pandemic um we talked offline so i i got i skipped ahead but what's going yeah. on with um you and the guy so we're not dating anymore unfortunately um yeah during the entire time with like the protesting and i think that kind of like put a wedge between us that we couldn't come back from and i just we just kind of went in different directions and, and they weren't together, so. 
we're not talking anymore, unfortunately. Well, so, one of the things that I was telling you offline that is I really commend you and him because, you know, so many of us, myself included, have short attention spans and when, when there isn't a pandemic. So you layer that yeah. in, which nobody has a playbook on how to handle this. I really commended you and your boy because I thought, wow, that's, you guys met pre and you were really, it really did seem like you guys were putting the effort into making this work and that should be commended yeah. on so many levels. I don't know that you then realized that not only was there going to be a pandemic, but there was going to be racial protests going on, and the world yeah. was going to finally realize, wake up, motherfuckers, it's yeah. about racial it, injustice. And It came out of nowhere, so, yeah. Yeah, and I know, that's, I know that that's where you told me some of uh, where you can't maybe went in different directions. Um, what would you want mm -hmm. to say about that? Um, um, like you said, there's no playbook for loving during during the time of Corona. Um, I, I probably could write one now. So <laughs> I'll read it. Be on the lookout. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I, I'm proud of myself for keeping it going and and you know for us being interested in each other. I'm proud of him too. Like even though it it kind of fizzled near the end. Um, I'm happy that we had that experience and we had each other during this time. So it was a good experience. It was a growing experience. It was a learning experience. And that's what I think. Would you say it's a hundred percent done and you're moving on or you're open to, you know, you know um, I am moving on. I'm not going to say it's a hundred percent done. How about, how, what about that? What do you think of that? I think that's fair enough. And <laughs> you, you've expressed more and that I, I'm yeah, I love it. I totally would go yeah. with that. Um, I, on the other hand, recently have met a couple guys online and the the apps that one of which I was talking to. He wanted to talk on. Uh, it's like on, we were on Scruff, uh -huh. and he wanted to talk like late at night, and I was like, oh my god. Um, so I got my light ready. <laughs> and he's like, oh, my, you look really good. And then, you know, I don't turn on any of the FaceTimes without my light. And, um, you know, we'll see where that goes. Good for you. Yeah. Good. Um, I mean, That's we'll see. Exciting. It is. It's fun. And we'll see. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk to you about that I didn't know you were a fan of that just came out in the news today. There was a show back in the day called Noah's Ark that Logo ran for two seasons. Noah's Ark was a all African American cast that featured uh, gay characters. And yep. don't forget about the movie. Don't and then the, the movie. I was about to get to the movie. <laughs> Okay, sorry, Boo. Sorry. <laughs> my sister, <laughs> my sister Vivian and I actually were in LA with our friend Frank, and we happened to go to see it. I think and met the producer or the writer of it, and I loved Noah's Ark so much. They're having a reunion because they have so many fans. Cody, were you a fan of Noah's Ark? One hundred percent. After you texted me, I was like, Oh my god, I have to go look at all my Noah Noah's Ark. Season I know. Or I have to go through and, and reacquaint myself with like Chan and Noah and Wade and Ricky. Ricky, oh my God. Ricky is a friend of mine. <laughs> so let me just say to my audience here, you've heard it here first. Ricky, Christian, Vincent, uh, when I read the information that they were going to do this one night only, it's going to be July 5th. It's going to be live. It's called the COVID, let me just get it right because I don't want to get it wrong. It's called, uh, oh my goodness, um, the Rona Chronicles, COVID-19, oh. Rona Chronicles. However, they're going to bring, it, bring in race and deal with it all. But it's going to be live on July 5th. Uh, and they're also going to be talking, it's like where they their characters are a few years later, I think it's two years later, don't quote me on that, and they're going okay. to kind of do this live broadcast for all their fans because as I was reading, the they've 
they have so many fans that really miss the show. And yeah. the, I know, as you said, the Maybe. film, yeah, the film was like a gift to their fans, but I couldn't think of a better time with race and sexuality to have Noah's Ark come back for a one night only live broadcast. And yeah, it's, it's really topical right now. I, I, for one, and plus I miss those characters. Like I said, um, it, it, it's just the right time for them to come back. So, and I couldn't believe it was 15 years later. Like, Oh my God. Yeah, that just made me feel a little bit like, like I was a little bit old. I know, <laughs> I know. Mark, you loved Noah's Ark. I'm reading my notes here live. Uh, you loved Noah's Ark too. It was great. Yes, it was great. It was such. A, it was. I think it was because it. You, we saw black gay men featured yeah. in all black cast, and we hadn't seen black that. gay love. Black on gay the, love on the screen. Yeah. It was, so, uh, yeah, ahead of its time and needed. Um, by the way, I'm doing a special, uh, you're participating in it, Cody. Uh, I am. It, it's going to come out, I think, next Tuesday. If not next Tuesday, and Tags Podcast, it'll be the week after. But I'm targeting this Tuesday, video and audio of race and sexuality. And I've got some different interviews lined up. Cody is one of them. And I'll have my light on, don't worry. Have your light on. Chris, <laughs> Christian Vincent, who plays Ricky, has agreed to be on, um, do an interview with me to talk about the show and, and prep us for what we can expect. So I'm really excited about that to talk about uh, the exciting. show. Yeah, I know, I know. The good things between Sylvester and this, there's some good things happening. Um, I'm really excited about it all. I mean, we needed some good news, did we? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Mark again says they were not afraid to tackle any topic. And yeah. I would agree. I mean, one would argue, Cody, wouldn't you agree that just in general, having an all black cast that was gay, and I'm not sure if everybody was gay in, in real life, but that was kind of revolutionary. And if you say it's true 15 years ago, right? Yeah, for sure. And I, I think the majority of them were gay. And um, at least, like I say, about 90% of the cast. Right. Gay. Because I feel like I've met, like I've met Wilson Cruz, I've met Noah. Um, I mean, like, Ricky is, now I've met him through you, so now he's my new best friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Mark, um, Mark just put in the, uh, the comment section, they tackled HIV and AIDS, um, and you're right. And speaking of Wilson Cruz, he was the nurse that was handling all that, and we love Wilson Cruz, I mean, yeah, come on now. Amazing. Yeah, Oh, I, I'm a Trekkie, so I have to take it off of Noah's Ark, but he's on Star Trek now, and I love He him. is! <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that Star Trek keeps going on and on, I love it so much i'm here for it <laughs> okay so but, go ahead but yeah they they tackle all the tough issues and they really got down in, in into the the issues of the time and they're still so prevalent now in our community and i just love the show i couldn't imagine my my 20s without it your 20s. Okay, Cody. <laughs> Don't do me, okay? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Daniel. Don't call me out on, on the internet, okay? All I right. won't. I won't. Daniel, hello back to you. <laughs> Who's logging on right now as we're wrapping up here. Um, Cody, 19 and a half, actually. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Cody, one of the things you and I always talk about on every show that we've been um, is RuPaul's Drag Race, and I know you're a big fan of it. Are you watching yep. the current? Uh, what, what, what are they calling it right now? All Stars. Yeah, All Stars. I'm watching it. Team Shea Kool Aid here. I'm sorry, I, I went home, but Team Shea Kool Aid all the way. A lot of drama, right? I know. I'm so here for it. Derek Barry and in India Farah. Uh, um, <laughs> and then India's. Go, can we talk about India's initial performance though on that? Because I watched the first initial one. And I'm like, am I going to be into this? But that first episode, I saw all the drama that was laid out, and 
and uh, sucked you in. India's performance was like, oh, on point. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Remember when it wasn't my favorite. It, she looked like that initial like performance she hurt herself. Like she, the one where she was spinning around and like twirling her, her head, head with Ricky. She was with Ricky Martin. <laughs> Ricky right, Martin Ricky was the Martin. Guess. He could he could do anything, anytime, anywhere he wants. Oh my god! <laughs> well, I thought every episode that was going to have Ricky Martin, and <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll tune in if Ricky Martin's a part of this. Uh, um, but. Sadly, he's not on every episode. Sadly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he'll make a guest appearance later on. <laughs> I, I'm going to put him on my TV. I'm just going to put a little picture of him so he's in every episode from now on. Okay, but just to clarify, you are into this this um, season, what we're about. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah. Okay. I love... I'm, I'm here for this. The drama, I'm here for... Because I, I know some... Like there's some special things that are going to be going on, some gags that are going to be going on. I can't wait to see what RuPaul throws our way, and I haven't heard anything. So, all right, now yeah. we'll tune in. We'll be excited. We'll keep it going. Um, before I let you go, Cody, now that you are officially single, I'm using air quotes here. Uh, <laughs> Um, are you open to meeting people? Are you talking to different people? And if you are, what does that mean? Are you going to, as we open up, as the country opens up, are you going to be willing to meet them at socially distance or what's going on? Definitely dating and socially distance. Um, is my Instagram handle in the, in the bottom right hand corner? Uh, let me check. I think it is. I mean, give me at, the at Mr. Okay, yeah, it is in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up in them DMs. I mean, we we can go on a date. I'm here for it. Hey, I, get that list going. <laughs> I, I think I might have a date this weekend, actually. So, social, oh. social distance. Too. I love it. I love it. Good for you. Yeah. And, and Cody, seriously, um, I know I told you this before, but thank you for sharing and letting us vicariously live through you as you know, run through all this that uh, I know it's not always easy to share what you don't know is coming and, and that's yeah, I really appreciate that thank you oh it was absolutely my pleasure I I really felt like a connection with everything and everybody and it really was a joy to share so yeah thank you for absolutely. having me and, and, and letting me share my story with everybody. And I saw earlier that you're open to having somebody make a glory hole for... <laughs> <laughs> I me? Mean, who is it? Who is not into that? Let's just... Right? <laughs> I think that's the shorter list. Let's and <laughs> the reality is you're not breathing out all that stuff. It's, it's just down there. So it makes sense. Safe, economical, um, I am just. I am just saying, it, it's, everything's a redefinition as we move on here. Cody, Maurice, Duggett, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you too. We will talk very soon. Yes, boo. All right. Bye bye. Oh my goodness. I want to thank you all for tuning in today and for Sex with Stevie. It was so great to be back. I miss this show so much. It's just an offshoot of my other show. If you do listen to textpodcast.com uh, tomorrow you can expect uh, if you're a Patreon member and that's where you get some extra special sexy perks. Patreon is just a tiered level. You can come in at different tiers where you support the show that you're seeing and that you listen to. It comes out every Tuesday. This comes out every Thursday. Patreon.com forward slash talk about gay sex. And on there, one of the perks that you get is another podcast and it's called Dark and Dirty. And it's the after show. And this week I'm really excited to share with you one of my early experiences when I just moved to Los Angeles as a young actor. And I met this guy. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, continue to be safe and healthy and social distance and wear your mask because it's very important. I love you and I will see you soon.